Premier League transfer window is basically just shut. Uh, it's about midnight now. Uh, all the transfer business has got done. So, you know what? I thought I'd do a little tier list, go for every Premier League club real quick and rank them from how good their transfer window has been. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go in reverse order. So go from Wolves all the way to Arsenal. And yeah, let's get into it. And if you enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> but all right, let's start with Wolves because Wolves are my club. For people that haven't seen my channel before. I'm going to put Wolves in the second bottom category in meh. Now, I'll probably have a full video on my channel in the next few days about Wolves specifically, but I think Wolves have had, considering our European FFP thing that we've got going on right now, it's been a pretty okay transfer window. Um, with Huang Ki Chan coming in, it's kind of helped out the forward line a bit, but it kind of feels like we're taking a big punt on Yes and Mascara, kind of breaking through. Um, but considering we've made a profit, the squad has improved. So I would put it in, I'm going to put it in meh. If you're taking European FFP into account, solid, but I'm going to ignore that and put it in meh because it's just can't, it's just a bit boring, isn't it, from a Wolves point of view. Um, West Ham next. I think West Ham have actually, a few weeks ago, I was kind of worried about West Ham. You know, in my Premier League predictions, I think I put them really low. I think I put them like 12, but it's all of a sudden turned into a pretty amazing transfer window for West Ham. You know, they haven't lost anyone of real significance apart from obviously Felipe Anderson, but... That, that was a flop anyway. That That's in West Ham's history now. And if you look at Chelsea uh, in um, West Ham's incomings, Alex Carl's a bit of a punt, but it gives them squad depth. They've needed some central midfield depth for years. They can't just rely on Socek and Declan Rice. And by the way, who they've kept really important as well. Nikola Vasic, I prefer to Jesse Lingard personally. It's a big risk with the fee, but he's a lot younger. It feels like someone that would fit their squad a bit more. You know, big guy. They can kind of punt it up for two. It fits David Moyes. And then Ariola's an elite goalkeeper. He was probably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League last season. You know what, actually, I'm going to put it in almost perfect. I don't think they've done anything wrong. Genuinely, I don't. They've kept their squad. They've strengthened the squad depth. It's been a pretty perfect window for West Ham. And it feels like West Ham's, um, you know, boardroom have kind of started to become competent after kind of a bit of a mess for a few years. All right, next, Watford. Watford, it feels like they've ta taken a lot of punts on players that have been in really random places and kind of just hoping it will work. Like Danny Rose, I don't mind a bit of depth. Um, Josh King, again, a bit of depth, don't mind. Yuri Kuchka is a decent player, proven at a decent level. Imran Loser excites me. but And it's a solid window. They've put depth into their squad. They've given themselves a good chance. Will it be enough to keep them up? I don't think so. I think I put them 18th in my Premier League prediction, but it's an okay window for a newly promoted club. They needed squad depth and they've brought that in. Uh, Tottenham, I think Tottenham had actually had a really underrated window. You know, I think they probably needed maybe another centre half and a backup striker. But you know, we find and I think one letting one before if go was a really bad decision, albeit I think it was out of their hands. But Christian Romero is a really elite young defender. Brian Hill's a really good young winger. Papa Sa is really good underlying numbers, and Emerson's kind of added to it. They still needed a striker, so I'm not going to put it in the top tier, but. It's been a pretty good window for Tottenham and they've kind of given Nuno most of the things he needs to succeed, in my opinion. Um, Southampton's an interesting one. Phil Walcott I'm not a big fan of and they've taken some punts on some young guys. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce this guy's name, but Lianco maybe. I was looking at his numbers a few a few days ago when they signed him. In Not as physically dominant as Yannick Vestergaard, but probably a bit, bit better on the ball. He's a pretty decent dribbler for a defender. I think Roman Parrod's a Big upgrade on Ryan Bertrand. I'm surprised they let Mario Lamina go. And obviously Danny Ings is a loss. I don't think he's as big a loss as people make out. But I think you'd, overall you have to say it's a mere window just because their squad hasn't really improved. But I think they'll still stay up. And they've had it enough to stay up for me. So I'm not going to put it in poor. But it's not a great window for Southampton. It does feel like they're just going to stay up because there are worse sides. But they're kind of teetering on the edge for me. Um, Norwich... Norwich have actually had a really interesting window. Obviously, Emi Wendy is such a big blow for them to leave. But I don't hate any of their signings that they've made, bar Josh Sargent. Brandon Williams is good depth. I really like Ozan Kabak. Billy Gilm was a bit of a punt, but clearly a good player. Solis is a really good young attacker with underlying numbers. Might not make the step up, but it's worth the risk. And Rashitska is a good, a good attacker. And Lise Malou has got really good underlying numbers as well. They've taken some punts on guys with resale value, and they've supplemented the squad with loans. So they won't get stuck in big rages if they get relegated. I think it's a solid window for Norwich. I still think they'll get relegated, but they've secured their club long term. And 
I know it's probably not what you want to hear as a Norwich fan, but they've done all they really can with their budget. Um, Newcastle, it's the most Newcastle window ever. Mike Ashley not put any investment in. I feel so sorry for Steve Bruce and the Newcastle fans. It's an awful window. I like Joe Willock. He's a really good dribbler. He's a he's good at getting into the box, but he's not someone that's going to dominate a game. Midfield Newcastle needed some centre backs and they needed a central midfielder for me. Um, I don't rate John Joe Shelby. I don't rate rate Isaac Hayden. They let Longstaff go. It just feels like they're setting up the club for failure, and eventually they will get down go down. I think it'll be this season. One one injury to Sam Maxwell and Callum Wilson, they're done. It's a poor window, and I think all their fans would admit that as well. Um, Man United, look, I'm going to have to put Man United in um, almost perfect in the top tier. Obviously, a central midfielder is needed. Um, but I think, assuming Donny van der Beek gets minutes and that squad gels, they can't, look, you're not going to always get every signing you want. And they needed a central midfielder. But you can't complain when you've added three world-class players to your eleven. It has to be in perfect window. Man City, I'm actually going to put in May, you know. I like Jack Grealish, and Jack Grealish will be a good signing for them, um, keeping Scott Carson, whatever. But they've let some really interesting young players go, which I'm surprised they let go on permanent deals. You know, in Lucas Nemecha and uh, Angelino's left, Eric Garcia's left. I just don't think Man City are any better than they were last year, and they don't need to be, which is why isn't why I'm putting them there. But I feel like they've just kind of stayed the same, so I can I can only really put them in men. They've let some interesting talent go. So I think it's just been a pretty standard window. I still think they need a left back, even before the Ben Mendy news. And they probably needed maybe another central midfield option, but they'll be fine, Man City. But I don't think it's been a particularly interesting window. Same with Liverpool. I'm going to put Liverpool in the same category. Um, you know, I don't. I think Harvey Elliott coming through will be a big help for them. Assuming he brought him a Canate can, you know, avoid injuries, they'll be okay. But. It just feels like another stagnating window, and they're not in the they're not in the situation where Man City are, where they have such a big squad, and letting Shakiri go, they're kind of just hoping that Harvey Elliott and Divock Origi can put up numbers, and I don't have faith that they will. So I'm going to leave them in in May. It just feels like Liverpool are kind of not they haven't taken that opportunity they had about a year ago to kind of kick on and become an elite club, you know, where they'll consistently win league titles, and I'm sure that's frustrating for their fans. Um, Leicester I think Leicester have had a pretty solid window again I, I'm not going to put them in perfect but I'm going to put them in, in pretty good a lot, I really like the Adam Ola Lookman signing it's worth the punt on a loan I think Vestergaard feels a bit unimaginative but he, they needed a centre-back after the Wesley Fofana injury I don't like Ryan Bertram but he's he's solid cover and Bubakari Samar is a really good young midfielder I think Pats and Dakar is obviously a risk but they needed a forward option with Jamie Vardy's numbers going down last season, although he's had a good start to this season. Pretty good window for Leicester for me. Still think they needed one more, but Leicester just do what they do. It feels like a bit more of a boring window for Leicester with Bertrand and um, Vestergaard, but they'll have to be happy with that window for me. So yeah, I'll put I'll put them in the second highest category. Uh, Leeds... <laughs> Leeds an interesting one. I don't hate any of their signings. I think Dan James is perfectly competent. Jack Harrison was already there last season. And Junior Firpo is a clear upgrade. And it means they've finally got a left back. But And also, obviously, uh, Robin Koch coming back and Diego Llorente coming back will kind of feel like new signings, right? But Leeds didn't really need much to stabilise. They've got players coming back from injury. It's a solid window for Leeds. I think they probably would have needed maybe a central midfielder. Maybe. I think that would help them out. Although Stuart Dallas will probably get all minutes there. I think it's just a pretty solid window for Leeds. I don't think they can really complain. Uh, right, Everton next. I don't want to be too harsh on Everton because I know they've got European... They've got um, FFP issues, right? And I think with the money they've got, which is basically nothing, they've actually had an okay window. You know, Rondon will be a perfectly competent rotation guy with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And Damari Gray's been better than I thought he would be. But... <sighs> Purely because of their FFP situation, I'll put them there. But if I was if I was ignoring that, I would put it in a poor window. But they've added some depth. This is a stabilising season for Rafa Benitez and to come over with some FFP stuff and kind of get them into Bramley Dock. So it's just a bit meh, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Uh, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, I think they've handled the 
the squad overturned pretty well. Elise's coming from an injury. Alton Edwards, a really big addition on deadline day. Will Hughes is decent depth. Conor Gallagher's had a really good start. And Mark Guahy and Joachim Anderson is a pretty solid centre-back partnership. And Palace have needed this rebuild for years. And I think they've handled it in the best possible way they can. I still think maybe they need one or two more, given the amount of players that have gone out. But I think they've handled that really well. Better than I thought they ever would. So I'm going to put them in pretty good. Uh, Chelsea, obviously, were the kind of the big people on deadline day. Uh, they missed out on um, on Jules Kunde, which is a bit of a shame. And I'm sure they'll be disappointed to lose Fikayo Tomori, or at least their fans will anyway. But Saul's come in, or at least at the time I'm recording this, it looks like he's going to come in. On a loan, that's a really low-risk option. I still think they needed a centre-back or some right-back cover, but you've got to put it in a pretty good window. I think if they had got Kunde, it would have been up there. But... I think that's a perfectly competent window for Chelsea. And they've improved after winning a Champions League. Centre-back would have put them up there, but perfectly solid window for them. Um, Burnley. <laughs> oh, well, they got Connor Roberts from Swansea. I didn't see that. That's an interesting pickup for them. You know what? You know what? For Burnley, this is a really solid window. For, if, if they were any other club, I'd put them in meh or in poor. But Maxwell Cornet has a bit of pace, which they needed for ages. Nathan Collins is a pretty good young centre-back. A bit more progressive than the typical Burnley centre back, although I hope it doesn't become another Ben Gibson situation. And Connor Roberts is some good fullback depth. Yeah, that's a pretty solid window for Burnley. You can't really complain about that. If you're a Burnley fan, it's something semi interesting. Um, Brighton, I don't know who half of these players are. Mark Cucurella is an amazing signing, and Wepu is a bit of a punt. But I just trust by Brighton. I think it is a bit of a meh window, especially losing Ben White, but they've kept Basuma. <sighs> Top of the inside. I'm going to put it in meh for now, but I trust Brighton. I trust Brighton's recruitment team. I'm sure some of these players that I don't know about will... Actually, you know what? No, Mark Kukrell has banged it up. I'll put them in solid, but that could go higher. I trust Brighton. I rate Brighton. They'll be fine. Same with Brentford. Like, I don't know loads about Brentford signings. Um, I don't know why Mark Kukrell is in there for. <laughs> Chris Fryer and, and Franco Nikas both started really well. They're both important to the system. Brentford know what they're doing. They're a solid club. I trust, I trust, they're going to stay up. They'll be fine. Um, Aston Villa, when you lose your captain, I don't think you can ever put the window too high. I think they've handled losing Jack Grealish in, in a pretty good way, which is why I'm going to put them in pretty good. I think they'll be fine after losing an influential player. I like Amid Wendia. I like Leon Bailey. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan on Danny Ings, but he started well. I don't know why Twan Zebi's really gone there. It doesn't really feel like a good move for him. And then Ashley Young's coming as well. They've, they've added depth. They've secured their Premier League future for the next probably three, four years. And they've replaced Jack Grealish in the best possible way they can. So I think that can only be considered a pretty good window under the circumstances. You can't turn down 100 million for Jack Grealish. The fact that they've accepted that to me shows that they're competent, unlike the Harry Kane situation. And finally, Arsenal. Um, Arsenal are interesting. I feel like they're a bit all over the place and some of their signings are a bit... a bit... I'm not sure on, you know, Nuno Tuarez is a bit of a punt, same with Laconga. But Martin Odegaard's a good signing. And Ramsdale's better than people say he is. And I like Ben White and Tommy Yassi. They're both profiles, really good young centre backs. Um so I can't really knock Arsenal too much. I'm surprised they let go of Mav- Mavropanos and Saliba. But in terms of keeping that squad a bit younger, trimming it down and giving Arteta the best possible chance, it's a solid window. I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. And they've given Arteta the funds now. And it's all on him to deliver now. So, yeah, those are all the 20 clubs. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, let me know if you disagree with any of these. I think I've been pretty fair. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, peace.